The Bible tells us that Satan is going to be bound in a bottomless pit during the 1,000 years. What is this pit? Now, the word that is used when it uh, talks about the bottomless pit in Revelation, the original Greek, it's the word abusos. It's also the same word that God uses in the Greek version of the Old Testament called the Septuagint when he describes the world at creation as without form and void. It was an abusos. How many of you remember a story where Jesus cast a legion of demons out of a demoniac by the uh, shores of Gadara? These legion of demons spoke to Jesus and they said, please don't cast us out of the man into nothingness. And the word they use is, don't cast us out into the abusos. The very same word in Greek that is translated as bottomless pit in, in Revelation. So why the King James translators? It is a mystery. None of them are around to ask why they chose the word bottomless pit at the end of Revelation chapter 20 there. when they're, We don't know. Because in, Mar, in Luke chapter 8 where it talked about the demons saying don't cast us into the abyss, into the deep. They use the word deep there. The nothingness. See, when the devil has nobody to tempt and manipulate, that is the abusos for him. He's chained by circumstances. The devil goes crazy. He's a workaholic with nobody to tempt and nobody to manipulate. What's he going to do? All he can do is ponder his fate. Am I right? So what is the bottomless pit where Satan and the lost are all restrained, where they're all bound? It's the earth. In its destroyed, darkened desolate condition. I beheld the earth, it was void. And all they see on every side are bleached bones and destruction and broken down cities and cracked earth and it is just darkness and cold. There is no light, the Bible says. For 1,000 years, he will look at the results of his rebellion. Why is God giving him that time to do that? Why not just destroy him first time around? Well, one thing, God is long-suffering. He's demonstrating that. Even after Satan has a thousand years to consider the results of his rebellion, does he change? Does he ever repent? And I think sometimes we may underestimate the high exalted position that Lucifer had before he fell. He was the highest of God's created beings. Very powerful Sometimes we underestimate the power of the devil. I don't like to dwell on it, but you need to know something about your enemy. And he was a mighty angel. Angels are ministering spirits. Don't forget, one angel of the Lord, 185,000 Syrians died when he struck them. And again, when an angel of the Lord uh, came to roll away the tomb, 100 Roman soldiers were terrified to death, the Bible tells us. Satan was the leader of the angels. God is going to execute Lucifer. These other beings in heaven knew him when he was good. God didn't create him and he was suddenly born bad. It happened after a long time. We don't know how long Lucifer was. You know, you would have loved him back then if you knew him before he fell. Some people love him now. But he was really good. The Bible says every good and perfect gift is from God. He was made perfect. The Bible says he was perfect in all his ways from the day he was created until iniquity was found in him. How long was that? I don't know. Think about this. It might have been a million years that Lucifer went through the universe and everyone hailed him and he was beautiful and nice and humble and, and God's going to destroy him now. After this 6,000 year rebellion, he is demonstrating to the whole universe, I have no alternative. And you'll see why in just a moment. So, during this period of time, Satan is confined to this planet to behold the results of his rebellion, and it is a very bleak thing to behold. Revelation 20, verse 4, says that there will be judgment going on in heaven during the 1,000 years. What for and who will participate in this heavenly judgment? Revelation 20, verse 4, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now let's ask an obvious question here. Are the redeemed who are living and reigning with Christ in their judgment, are they deciding at that point who is saved and lost? Obviously not because that's already determined. Jesus says, behold, I come and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. When he comes, rewards are determined. So we're not deciding who is saved and lost. The word judgment for the Hebrew mind, the writers of the Bible meant much more. 
You ever heard a person say, they've got good judgment? Does that mean they walk around all day going, guilty, innocent, guilty, innocent? Is that what that means? No. It means that they evaluate things well and they make decisions or they have good discernment. They say, that's true, that's not. That's called good judgment. They are not pronouncing sentence. They are evaluating what is right and what is wrong. The judgment that the saints are doing during the 1,000 years is really to evaluate the judgments of God in a sense. Revelation 15 verse 4, let me explain. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thy judgments are made, what? Manifest. When something's manifest, what does it mean? It's revealed. God is revealing His judgments. And again, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. It says, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. So when do we judge? Until the Lord come, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. When, when we get to heaven, are all the tears going to be dried during the 1,000 years or after? It's not till you get to Revelation 21 that God wipes away the tears. You know, uh, suppose you get to heaven and someone you loved is not there. Are you going to have some sadness? Is there ever sadness in heaven now? Yes. What do you think angels feel when they look at the misery? What do you think the Lord feels? What do you think the Father felt when Jesus was dying on the cross? Heaven is intensely interested in what is happening here. Moses and Elijah are watching what's happening to the church, aren't they? They're very interested. And there are heartaches and there are victories and cheers. Angels sing when sinners are converted. What do they do when, when Christians turn away? So during that 1,000 years, there may be some time where we're going to have questions answered and there's going to be some struggles. Don't misunderstand. We'll, there'll be pleasures at His right hand forevermore. We'll be surrounded with such glories and bliss that it'll overshadow the sadness, but there will be some tinges of sadness, I believe, even during that time. At the end of the 1,000 years, God says He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. At the close of the 1,000 years, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, will come down from heaven to this earth. Who will come down with it and where will it settle? Revelation 21, verse 2. The Bible says, I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. So if we have been with God on the sea of glass in the new Jerusalem, then where do we spend the 1,000 years? In heaven, not on earth. How else can we come down from heaven, right? Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. At the end of the 1,000 years, the Lord is going to say, get ready, we're going to a wedding. This is when the meek inherit the earth. And this is also the final showdown between the forces of good and evil during this time. At that time, Satan is now released from his prison for two reasons. One, he's not alone because the new Jerusalem is coming out of heaven down to earth. The Lord is going to prepare the foundation for it during that time. The Bible tells us that another reason Satan is loosed is all the wicked who have ever lived come out of their graves. They're called Gog and Magog. They were all the enemies of God who have ever lived through the ages. The number of them is like the sand of the sea. And the Bible tells us Jesus comes down. Zechariah chapter 14, his feet touch the Mount of Olives. It splits in the middle, forms a great valley prepares the foundation for the new Jerusalem, which then settles down in this new foundation the Lord has prepared. The very spot where Jesus left is where He comes back. Amen? Amen. Won't that be wonderful? What will happen to the wicked dead at this time, and how does this affect Satan? Revelation 25, we already read this, the rest of the dead do not live again until the thousand years are finished, which means what? They do live again when the thousand years are finished. And it says again, when the thousand years are expired, Satan is loose from his prison. Why is he not chained anymore? He now has a vast army to tempt and manipulate and try to inspire and incite to take the city of God. What will interrupt Satan's plan to capture and destroy the city of God? Suddenly, Jesus rises up above the new Jerusalem, and it says, I saw a great white throne, Christ on his throne, saying, the devil is not the king, I am the king. Christ on His throne, seated at the right hand of power. And again, Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. And it says, And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. This is the great judgment. Some have this idea that the judgment is going to take place 
where one by one people come and stand before the Lord and they say, let's look at the evidence, guilty, innocent, guilty, innocent. 